Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 0363659, 0703 768118. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. I want us to read from the word of the Lord, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we will begin from verse 10 through 15. 1 Corinthians 3. From verse 10 through 15. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. I simply want to uh, add one more issue from the passage and I am extremely grateful to God that um, I have been well fed this week. And I have been challenged, and I have been rebuked, and I have been uh, reminded of many things that I need to uh, continue to work on as a child of God and as a servant uh, in his vineyard. What I want to stress tonight as briefly as I can, is the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, or the day of accountability. And uh, all our teachers, our spokesmen, and women of God have actually shared quite a whole lot. But as far as we can find in the passage, Verse 13 says, work will be shown for what it is, because the day, in the New International Version, the day or day is capitalized, or begins with uh, capital D, meaning this is the day of the Lord. And the day of the Lord simply uh, has to do with that theme. 
because there can be no mention of the subject of uh, accountability without alluding or referring to the day when such exercise will take place. In the Old Testament period, we know that the day of reckoning, I mean, that day is a day of reckoning, uh, a day of God's visitation for punishment, for deliberate sin or sinfulness of the people of God. And of course, for the Jewish people, uh, they were deluded to believe it was going to be a day when God will punish their enemies when God will bring disaster to their oppressors to their tormentors so they always like to hear the day of the Lord the day of the Lord and of course some of the prophets want them not to be presumptuous and believe the lies of false prophets who were misleading them and of course some of them like Joel, Jeremiah warned them that the day they were expecting will be extre extremely harsh for them it will be uh, a day when they will regret and from the Bible we consider the description of the day of the Lord we are told it's a, a day of God's anger a day of God's anger you find that in Lamentation chapter 2 verse 21 and it's going to be a day of wrath you find that in Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 15 and uh, Romans chapter 2 verse I mean verses 5 to 11 talks about that day which will be a day of darkness a day of wrath and of course it's going to be a day of gloom a day of darkness clouds just like a brother reminded us of the almighty June when students will begin to shake because cumulatively they will have to give account of their academic stewardship of several courses put together and they will have to sit for exam for a day or two and those who are not ready who never paid attention from day one until the end of the year or the academic year they will begin to shake now what are some of the attitudes towards the day of the Lord what are some of the attitudes of some of us when we are talking about the day of accountability first of all there is usually this indifference indifference like the five foolish virgins in Matthew 25 1 to 13 where well, some of them they prepared some but somehow they decided not to pay attention to details and as we heard when it comes to the question of accountability we are going to begin to talk about details virtually everything maybe there are some of us who are indifferent of the various warnings and the pulling of our ears this week and we need to really wake up maybe Jonah was actually indifferent to the mandate of the Lord God go to Nineveh and go and preach repentance to them but he decided to do something else of course there is procrastination and there is need for all of us to prepare for eschatological suddenness 
And uh, by that I mean the word of the Lord says in Revelation 22 verse 12 that behold I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. In other words, when we begin to talk about the second coming of our Lord, the judgment day, when the righteous judge will sit and we will have to give account of our stewardship, it is essential that we will not begin to procrastinate, begin to say we will do what we need to do today and we will begin to shift it till tomorrow, till some other time. And we have been given mandates in relationship to what we need to do when it comes to the matter of the value of the soul. The various assignments we've been given as children of God that we will not procrastinate. I will not shift what I need to do now until some other time. There is also presumption. That's another thing that we do. We presume that maybe this is not for me. And some folks of all deluded themselves by claiming themselves as God's elect. But they perished. This is what uh, Paul wanted the Corinthians to actually consider very seriously. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And uh, begin from verse 6. He says, Now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters. As some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in pagan revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test the Lord as some of them did and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by destroying angel, by the destroying angel. Now these things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us, on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. You can imagine this one is even referring to that day of accountability. And it is essential that we will not presume and think we are okay when we are not. And consider how Peter also warned those who are still presumptuous in relation to time. Second Peter chapter 3, 1 to 11. Oh, they've been talking about this. They've been saying this, preaching it, teaching it. But he says 1,000 years before the Lord is like a day. So all of us here as we live here to go and as we have received serious warnings, we must never presume that all is well. None of us should presume that it is the duty of the other servant of the Lord as we are equally responsible and we will be judged accordingly. Some of us also make attempt at manipulation. We try, if possible, to cheat away. To think we can pull wool on the eyes of the Lord. The parable of the shrewd manager in Luke chapter 16, 1 to 15 is pointing us to that fact that we will not try to think we can play games with our Lord. It is not possible. That day of accountability is a day when none of us will be able to hide. It's not going to, we are not going to get a lawyer, a senior advocate, 
someone else that we think will be able to defend us because by then our great advocate will no longer handle that because he has done what he needed to do as at when due and of course lack of preparation is another attitude because that day will come when we least expect it now apart from the uh, five foolish virgins that were not ready the other five were ready they prepared themselves we are told that uh, they forfeited the opportunity of sharing fellowship with the righteous judge with the bridegroom matthew 25 1 to 13. now because the day will bring it to light that's verse uh, 13 again it is important that all of us as we leave here to go we will begin to be very serious about many many things and i want to share with you what are some of those things what are some of the things the lord will want to throw in such light on us first our secret acts and there are so many secret things we may be doing uh, mark chapter 4 verse 22 romans 2 16 just to save us some time i want you to uh, pay attention to those uh, bible passages our secret acts acts deeds things that we do that we think no one will ever know things that we do in secret maybe dirty things that we even do with our spouses with our families with some members where we think no one else can see us do we still have pastors bishops church leaders who are still in secret courts all secret acts we need to get rid of them before the day of accountability comes and the bible also warns us about our character romans 2 5 to 11 we list i mean it's listed so many things maybe it is important for me to uh, read that romans chapter 2 and from verse 5 because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of god's wrath when his righteous judgment will be revealed god will give to each person according to what he has done to those who by persistence in doing good seek glory honor and immortality he will give eternal life but for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil there will be wrath and anger there will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil first for the jew then for the gentile but glory honor and peace for everyone who does good first for the jews then for the gentiles for god does not show favoritism there is also our words what we say how we say it a while ago we were talking about communication in relationship to our spouses wives husbands talking very harshly to one another caring less about god's dignity in the life of this my wife or my husband our words 
will be judged. And it is essential that we pay attention to that. Matthew chapter 12, 36 to 37. And of course, our motives. Our motives. The searchlight of the righteous judge will be shown on our motives. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. Why do you do what you do? And why do you do it the way you do it? Is it in order to outdo someone else? To live above the other person? So consider your motives. And then our good deeds, of course, will be rewarded. And we are told that our work and ministry, as we said, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, these are areas where the Lord will throw his such light upon. In conclusion, the day of the Lord is when each of us will be rewarded for the good we have done, for adding value to his kingdom. And again, as we have it in the testimony of Paul, that man of God confidently declared, Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. So that day is coming, and I need to prepare for it. When it will happen, that is none of my business. The Lord even said, none of us, not even the angels. He even decided to make it clear to his disciples that he, did, he didn't even know. Of course, as the Son of Man, he could claim he didn't know. But nonetheless, it is only the mighty God who knows when that will happen. As I leave here to go, and when I leave tomorrow, I decided already that by the grace of God, from what I have heard, what he has taught me, reminded me, reprimanded me of, I will have to begin to do things differently. I teach and I interact with students these days, and particularly those who are postgraduate students, and I've had occasion to get extremely impatient with some students. I've had occasion to actually talk very harshly to some. And I felt I wanted to know how some of them even go through master's level, especially those in PhD. I could not even imagine or believe my eyes to begin to read nonsense English. There's anything like that. And I become extremely impatient. I'm wondering, even as I started hearing what God brought to me, what will I do differently when I get back? Will I be willing to overstretch myself to help someone to do something better? And here I stand before you. I have opportunity to preach to a society every now and then. I 
preach a message for someone celebrating his 80th birthday one that rose to the chief land officer for the entire federal government and several of his colleagues top level people came and my topic was the purpose of gray air and I had opportunity to actually challenge these men and women oh I wish I did even much more what are you going to do in relationship to this issue of accountability senior colleagues fellow pastors apex leaders that day of the Lord that day of accountability is coming I don't want to be found wanting that day I don't want to begin to hide behind the needle in other words I want to be able to come and stand before the judgment seat of the righteous judge with chest high just like that man giving ten talents and the other one five and they were bold enough to present themselves before the master may the Lord grant me grace and may the Lord grant you grace to be able to do that which will make you stand tall on that day of the Lord let us pray Heavenly Father we bless you and thank you for this reminder we give you praise O Lord our God that we can be reminded that you have loaded us with so much invested so much in us and a day is coming when we will have to give account of all that you stored inside us to bless your people to transform the society precious father we pray the anointing equal to the task the anointing that we need to be able to be faithful stewards Lord you will renew it upon us you will let it continue to flow afresh upon our lives we appreciate you dear father in Jesus Christ's name Amen <laughs>